structural question. Okay? Yeah, right. What happens if, in fact, it's not bank, it's not in the consumer sector that lends, but it's the bank that lends? So I'm halfway to doing that. I want to show the difference in those two models. So now that I've, I've, you know, I've deleted. What I've done in, in, in the operation of the consumer goods table is I've deleted the debt as an asset of the consumer sector. But because Minsky un understands double entry bookkeeping, the debt is still there as a liability of the investment sector. Okay? So I can now tell Minsky to add a new asset for the banking sector by clicking on that column and now look and see if you can find an asset or a liability, pardon me that hasn't been allocated as an asset to somebody else. Now debt turns up there as the asset. So if I click on debt, then the operations of lending and repayment and payment of interest and payment of a fee turn up in the, in the system. Okay, so having done that, I'm now going to show that the interest payment is made to the banking sector. And I'm going to delete the fee, which is just a fiction. I need to make more changes than that to make the model completely consistent, but having done that alone, when I run the model, you now got a world with a positive growth rate. GDP is growing. If lending happens more rapidly, there's a boom. If repayment happens more slowly, the boom gets bigger. And increasing the amount of debt in the economy increases the amount of money. And then if there's a slowdown in lending, so lending happens more slowly, and repayment happens more rapidly, you have a slowdown in growth and potentially have a crisis. And GDP has fallen there. I'm now letting it extend, extend once more. That's making the structural point that acknowledging that banks lend money makes a huge difference to the behaviour of the macro economy. That's why I haven't bothered with all the other expect. I don't need to. Okay? I could add that in. It wouldn't make any difference to the demonstration I'm making here that a world without where banks don't create money is a totally different world to the world where they do. And yet the models that mainstream economists have is banks don't create money. So they're modeling a world that doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay? And when the crisis hit them, it hit them from a causal factor they didn't understand. Because beforehand, remember when I changed the level of um, of the debt to GDP ratio and change the amount of debt, there was no impact up here. Okay? Finance in that sense was completely independent from the economics. Now what I've shown you is simply by acknowledging that banks create money when they lend mm -hmm. and that debt is an asset of the banking sector, not an asset of the consumer sector, which is the way the neoclassical model, mm -hmm. utterly different world. Okay. So that, that's a prelude to explaining where the financial crisis came from and why mainstream economists couldn't see it, because they ignored the debt-to-GDP data. They said it doesn't matter. And they're still saying it 10 years after the crisis. Okay? They still describe anybody... This is Krugman and I had a fight on the internet about 2012. And in that fight, he described me as a, as a, as a banking mystic. Now, if he is a barter mystic. Okay? <laughs> He believes in the world in which barter exists, and he's trying to model capitalism that way. No wonder he didn't have a fucking clue the financial crisis was coming. Pardon my French. Um, and the same for mainstream economists. Now, what I'm seeing is the people in the mainstream who are starting to realise this are the, are the economists who work for central banks, because they're the ones who are actually still on the front line. They're still presenting their models to politicians, they're still predicting a return to equilibrium, it's still not happening, it's been happening for a decade. So they're finally saying, look, there's something we fundamentally don't understand. And the first ex-mainstream banker who came out with a strong statement like that was Narayana Koshalakota. Have you heard his name? Koshalakota? Okay. I'll just find his paper here. He was the head of the Minnesota Fed. Of the Minneapolis Fed, which is which is the most uh, the most conservative of, of the central banks, really. It was it was the, and he actually coined this little phrase, toy models. He's got a different idea of what I mean, but what I mean by toy models. But he still in, in, huh? like, no, he, he's not the, uh, the head of the Fed. Uh, he was the Fed. He's the he president of the Minneapolis Fed. Yeah, no he no longer is. He's, he's now. Because he was. Yeah. 
he was anti, anti. It was not due to his position. Well, he, left, sure. and, oh, he just retired, he reached his term. Okay. Yes. But over that period he moved from being a, a very conservative member of the bank to a very progressive member of the bank, worried about the rate of interest, worried about unemployment, and had the courage to come out and make statements like this. So I've got a great deal of respect for him in doing that. It's a huge shift. Because they, they were the real business cycle. Mm -hmm. He actually, they terminated the positions of some of the real business cycle modelers. Made them go back to the universities where they do less harm. Well, maybe more harm, I have to say. But here's his paper. He's saying the premise of serious models is a well-established model of macro theory. And this is all the details he gives of that macro theory there. And then he says there are all these decisions about how to model preferences, beliefs and expectations, financial markets, etc., etc. And then he said... Um, the, the, this is macro modeling is, is engineering. And he then ends up saying down here, if we're trying to find it here, let's see. Okay, this is the key statement. The premise of serious modeling is that macro research can and should be grounded in an established bodily model of theory. My own view is that after the highly surprising nature of the data over the last 10 years, this basic premise is wrong. We simply do not have a settled, successful model of the macro economy. Okay? So I. Tremendous respect for somebody who can come out and say that from within the mainstream. You know? And he's, he was doing that, shifting in that direction, while on the FOMC. So that, again, takes a lot of courage to step out of what you were seen as being and, and make those statements. What I'm trying to show is why they're wrong. As soon as you acknowledge that banks create money, the whole world changes. Okay? What, what is 